this morning under Jeff Choate, second year head coach at Montana State. Uh, spirited day here. We we're only allowed to come for the last half an hour of practice, but um, pretty good energy as per usual. That's been a trademark of Choate's tenure so far here at Montana State. And just a few pieces of news for you before we get into some that we talked to and some of the interview impressions that I have. Uh, I was only here for about 20 minutes. We were only allowed to come to the last half an hour, but the injury guys I did track down. Monty Folsom, senior he's out, had some off-season surgery that he's recovering from. Mitch Brott, who started at both left tackle and right tackle a year ago as a redshirt freshman out of Billings, Montana. He's not practicing with the offensive line either. Taylor Tuyasasopo, who redshirted as an offensive lineman last year, he had some off-season surgery as well, so he was not practicing today. Connor Floden, another guy who was a redshirt last year as an offensive lineman, he was out as well. Other guys I noticed not here, Hunter Malum, who's a walk-on receiver out of Missoula Hellgate. I think he's going into his fourth year as a junior. Uh, he had some off-season shoulder surgery as well, so he was not in the fold. Tyler Brugman, who started last year at quarterback uh, for several different games for Montana State before Chris Murray took over and became the Big Sky Conference Freshman of the Year. He's not in attendance until after the weekend. He is out of town for a family issue, according to Jeff Choate. Uh, so he'll be back in the mix, senior quarterback there. Um, other guys that I noticed, Chris Harris, who started a couple games at cornerback last year for Montana State. He's going to be a third-year sophomore. He was not uh, in his helmet. And uh, a couple other observations I noticed, Lane Noses Gun, who's a redshirt freshman walk-on offensive lineman. He's now practicing with the defensive line. Uh, Jake Roper, the transfer running back from Boise State, he's here. He's practicing with the running backs. Steven Omaragbe, the defensive line transfer from Air Force Prep, he is here. He's practicing with the defensive line. Darren Gardenhire, cornerback transfer from the University of Washington, who will not be eligible until the, till the 2018 season. He is here and practicing as well. A couple other position moves that I noticed. Uh, Jacob Hadley, he's practicing with the linebackers. Uh, so that was a move that was speculated before, but he's definitely moved the linebacker after playing safety last year. Looks like they're going to try him at one of the outside spots, the Richard freshman from Billings Central. I'm still trying to confirm if he was able to get his medical picture from a year ago. He did play in Montana State's first four, maybe five games a year ago, but then he ended up having season-ending surgery. Not one, but two season-ending surgeries last season. And so they, I know they, they were petitioning the NCAA to get him a red shirt. Not sure what his status is. Uh, but the other big position move, Sean Oplin, a guy who was a red shirt last year as a running back and a fullback, he's moved to middle linebacker and he's getting a ton of reps at Mike so far. Uh, I'll be back on Friday to check out more of the injury situation and some of the eligibility stuff. So check back with us there. Uh, but as far as just normal impressions from today, noticed a lot of energy. Obviously the big talking point of today, Chris Murray. Redshirt freshman, excuse me, true freshman last year. He'll be a true sophomore this year, the Big Sky Conference freshman of the year a year ago. Uh, this was his first day that he was allowed to talk to the media. So I'll have a video with Chris's first interview and some of the major impressions there, but huge storyline, three-time uh, all-conference quarterback, two-time Big Sky Conference player of the year, Daenerys McGee. He is back as Montana State's quarterback's coach, and he's working with Chris Murray. I also had a video with Daenerys talking about Chris's fundamentals, his potential, what he needs to do to take the next step. So be sure to check that out. Brian Armstrong was on his first day as the offensive coordinator today. Courtney Messingham left for North Dakota State. Armstrong, who spent a lot of time calling plays as the head coach and the offensive coordinator at Rocky Mountain College before coming to Montana State. He is now the offensive line. He was the offensive line coach last year. He's now the offensive coordinator this year. We have, we'll have a video with him later on this afternoon as well. Some of his impressions of Murray's progression during the offseason, some of the things he wants to get done with some of the tweaks he wants to make to this offense, and some of the ways he thinks Denarius McGee might be able to help Chris Murray. Across the offense, uh, there is some pretty heated position battles. They do return starters along the offensive line, four of them. Dylan Mahoney will start at left tackle. Alex Neal will start at center. Monty Folsom, most likely when he gets back healthy, will start at right guard. Uh, and then at the right tackle position, you'll probably have Mitch Brock. Mitch Brock can also play on the left side if, in case anything happens to Mahoney. And then that left guard position vacated by J.P. Flynn, who by all accounts is an NFL talent and a three-time all-league player. Uh, that'll be a heated battle between Jake McFetridge, who's going into his third year as a redshirt sophomore, as well as Caleb Gillis. And if Taylor Tudiasasopo was in the mix, he would probably battle there too. Jake Sessions, a kid coming off his red shirt from Colstrip, Montana, he'll probably fit in the mix too, getting some reps there. But with those four offensive linemen that I mentioned being out, that's a pretty big opportunity for the young guys to get a lot of reps. At wide receiver, you have pretty much everybody back. They graduated Brandon Brown and Will Krolick, who were kind of program guys. 
but not necessarily big contributors. A lot of talk here about getting Mitch Herbert back to the all-conference form that he had as a sophomore. Last year he really had a down year, but a lot of that was just because of Montana State's lack of ability to throw the ball, and that's to be expected with a true freshman quarterback. But a lot of talk about getting him back to the form he had his first two years, as well as getting Justin Page back to the form he had his first two years. Hello, Colter Nuanas from Skyline Sports here again. Apologies for getting cut off in that last video. A little bit of an experimentation here going on at Skyline Sports. We're trying to add some more video content for you guys. Had a lot of good feedback about you guys liking that kind of stuff, so really wanted to do that. The problem was I took so many videos. I interviewed Jeff Cho, took a video. I interviewed Chris Murray, took a video. I interviewed Brian Armstrong, took a video. and interviewed Daenerys McGee and took a video following Montana State's first session of spring football practice on Wednesday morning. They ran out of memory on my memory card and didn't know it. I'm kind of new at this camera thing. Usually my brother Brooks is the guy taking care of all the camera and video work, uh, but he's at his full-time job on Wednesdays, so uh, I had, had to get, kind of take over there, and I ran out of space there on the memory card, so I got cut off right in the middle of what I wanted to say, but I wanted to finish up that thought. As you heard, I was just getting cut off when we were talking about the wide receivers. Jay Sean Gates, a productive player who caught eight touchdowns his first three years at Montana State. He is no longer with the program left in the offseason. Uh, so that leaves a pretty good opportunity for a lot of young guys to kind of rise up. Jeff Choate has talked about that extensively, uh, and there's been a lot of talk amongst the offensive guys. I know Denarius McGee, after watching the film of Montana State, has been very impressed with just the physical skills he saw out of Cam Sutton and Keon Steffens, two guys who were redshirt freshmen a year ago who really pushed for playing time down the stretch. Uh, he was also really impressed with Kevin Cassis, a guy who had a really good year as a true freshman for the Montana State Bobcats. So that receiver group is going to be very interesting to watch. You have Mitch Herbert, who was a third-team All-Big Sky guy two years ago, but definitely saw a drop-off without his buddy Dakota Prukop throwing him the ball. Uh, you saw Justin Page, a guy who has proven to be one of the fastest players in this league, but also one-dimensional. He only really can catch the deep ball, hasn't really added much to his repertoire yet, but he is a senior now, and they're really looking to get him back to the form that made him one of the most explosive playmakers in the Big Sky Conference the last couple years. And then you have Steffens and Sutton and Cassis. Uh, so that there's going to be an interesting group of wide receiver, a whole bunch of guys who can play. It's just a matter of who rises to the top and does the best job there for the Bobcats. Well, we mentioned the battle on the offensive line to replace J.P. Flynn. I uh, mentioned the wide receivers. I think tight ends is an interesting group. Woody Brandom, number 46, he's moved back to the offensive side of the ball. He played defensive end for the last six or seven games a year ago because of the decimation Montana State experienced along the defensive line. They lost Tyrone Falanono for the year to a season-ending injury. They lost Shiloh LeBoy to a season-ending injury. They lost Evan Jeffries to a season-ending injury. So they were stuck there basically with redshirt freshman Marcus Ferreter, true freshman Derek Marks, and Woody Brandom, who last year was a redshirt freshman himself. He's back on offense. He's playing tight end. And that should, that's a really intriguing group because he's a big, strong kid. And I think the defensive line aspect of things definitely probably taught him a lot in terms of playing with his hands, having good punch at the point of attack. And he's always been a guy who can run and catch a ball. He showed that in Great Falls last year during the Triangle Classic. Caught a couple touchdowns. Really looked explosive. Uh, playing tight end a year ago. So he's a guy that's definitely going to be in a heavy competition, and I think his main competition will be Connor Sullivan. I know Daenerys McGee talking to him was really impressed with Sullivan. I know Brian Armstrong, the new offensive coordinator, uh, is definitely impressed with the physical skills Sullivan brings to the table. So that would be another fun spot to watch during spring drills. As far as the rest of the offense goes, Jake Roper, the R Boise State transfer running back, he's in the mix. He was there, not very big. So I'd be interested to see what happens when they put the pads on. I want to see him in live action. A guy that has his stature, that must tell me that he must have really good vision and really good speed if he's a Division One caliber player, despite the fact that he's not big at all. I mean, he's not very much bigger than Logan Jones, uh, maybe a Gunnar Brecky type guy, but not even as girthy as Gunnar Brecky is. I, I doubt he weighs 200 pounds like Brecky. He probably only weighs 180. So I was pretty struck by how small he was. But interesting to see if he's in the mix. Edward Vander, the transfer running back from Saddleback Community College, he's not on campus yet. I'm hearing that he's going to join the team in the summer, but he's not in the mix quite yet. Uh, he's a guy that will definitely compete for reps there too. And then Noah James, Nick Lassane, Logan Jones, those guys are the primary returners. Like I said in the uh, intro part of this video that we filmed at Bobcat Stadium, Sean Oplin, the kid from Troy, Montana, he's been moved to middle linebacker. I think that's a great move there by Montana State. Oplin's a big kid, a hard hitter, 
And uh, he's a very versatile athlete, state champion in the high jump and the 400 meters. So he's definitely a guy that can make some noise defensively. Uh, rather than bore you with just this look of my ugly mug on the middle of the screen, I get you to Jeff Choate's first impressions from spring drills. Also check back either this afternoon or tomorrow. We'll also have the video of Chris Murray, his first video, or I guess his first interview with the local Montana media. And I'll splice that with the video from Daenerys McGee talking about the Montana State offense, as well as Brian Armstrong and his impressions after his first practice as Montana State offensive coordinator, replacing Courtney Messingham, who left for North Coast State in the offseason. Uh, we will also talk about the defense uh, in the next installment of this video, but it was a pretty much all offensive day with Chris Murray making his debut with the media, as well as uh, Brian Armstrong, Janarius McGee, Jeff Choate joining us. So here's what Coach Choate had to say about the initial spring ball practice of his second season. And uh, please let us know anything you like or don't like. I promise I won't have this uh, this format again. I'll have the, uh, the videos done in the football field with a nice natural lighting. We won't run out of memory next time. I'll be more prepared. I'll have my card cleared of all the data and all that kind of stuff. So uh, check back with us. But please, any feedback you have, Coulter.Nuanez, that's C-O-L-T-E-R dot N-U-A-N-E-Z at gmail.com. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, you can also find my contact information anywhere on the internet. You can message me on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, on Bobcat Nation, on eGrizz, anywhere that you find my contact information. Please send us any feedback. If you like the videos, great. If you don't like looking at this ugly face, awesome too. I like to hear back from all of you. And we have, if you are a subscriber or you're looking to resubscribe, we've had a lot of subscription revenue problems lately. Our back end is a little bit broken. Uh, long story short, won't bore you with that, but. If you do want to get in contact with us and explore a subscription option, please do. We would love to have you. Uh, we really want to make this thing work. We're really trying to ramp up our efforts both in Bozeman and Missoula to make this a viable option for Skyline Sports. But if you are watching this, I know you're already one of our good followers, and we really appreciate that. Not only today, but every single day throughout the entire season. We're trying to really change the game here in the media in Montana, and we definitely want to bring you guys along for the ride. I think we have a ton of potential. We just need people to buy in. We need people to know about it. We need people to support it. We need people to talk about it. We are just a humble, bare-bones operation. We don't have any sort of a marketing budget, so we're doing this all just by our reputation, the quality of our content, and uh, just the, the, the uh, respect we've been able to garner in the journalism community and throughout the sports communities uh, around Montana. So we really appreciate you watching. really appreciate you being involved. And here's what Jeff Choate had to say about after Wednesday morning's practice. Check back. We'll have videos like this, but like I said, with me in the stadium rather than me in my wonderful office slash bedroom <laughs> throughout the rest of Spring Girls. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for listening. And if you ever, any, ever have any questions, concerns, feedback, Hit us up. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much. This is Coulter Nuanez from Skyline Sports. Here's Jeff Choate from Wednesday morning, March 22nd. All right. Here's up. Coach, general impressions, how did it feel to be back out here? That was good. It was good. It's just amazing what a difference a year makes, you know, just in terms of these kids' familiarity with us and uh, how we want to do things. We've got a couple new tweaks. Uh, one of the things I really noticed is uh, one of the things we charged the offense with, with was really simplifying our verbiage and trying to make it a little bit easier for our kids to communicate, allowing some of our tempo to even be a little more crisp. And I can see that for sure. I mean, we're, you know, it was, you know, black slide, boom, it's done, let's go. And they know what's going on. And uh, so I was very pleased with that. I thought Chris had a, uh, showed a good command today. Uh, Tyler, unfortunately, is not here. He's had a family issue that he's dealing with in Arizona that took place uh, early in the week. And so hopefully he'll be back for Saturday's practice and uh, be able to push him a little bit more there. But I thought the energy was good. Uh, uh, Again, change in practice a little bit, but the morning it's interesting because what one of the things we had to do is kind of, you're still going to lose a couple guys to class, and so one of the things we had to do is kind of do our team periods earlier in practice and get to finish with more individual, and I thought that took a minute for those guys kind of to adjust just, oh, this is the rhythm of how we do it. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's fun to see them, though. I, I, can t I can tell the growth in them, the maturity in them, uh, their discipline seems to be better, they're playing with better body position, it's exciting to get out here, and we got a bluebird day, too, so that doesn't hurt. Chris look a little bit different today than maybe when he stepped on campus in August. How Absolutely. would you? Yeah, I think just confidence. Okay. You know, I think uh, I think also just having Daenerys there to just kind of be in his ear all the time. You know, when it's tough when you're a coordinator and you've got to worry about all the other ten guys and what they're doing, and then hopefully you get to work on that quarterback and 
in, in meetings, and here he's got somebody who's got eyes on him every single rep and can correct, correct his footwork and his read progression and all those things. And so I think he's a lot more comfortable with what we're trying to do. And uh, I think obviously having Terry's here is a, is, a, is a benefit for him as well. Is it hard to step in as a freshman quarterback and be a leader? Do you feel like he has a better chance now that he has a little bit of time under his belt? Yeah, I think he's got some street cred. You know, I think that any, and really, uh, Chris, even though he's kind of got a quiet demeanor, I really do think he's a pretty good leader between the white lines. Uh, I, and I think he'd be the first one to say, you know, I've got a, I've got some growing to do and, to, and some maturing to do before I can really be the face of the program. But when, it, when he gets out between the white lines, that's his, uh, that's his comfort level. And I think that uh, he does a good job of taking charge. And even though he's not an overly vocal guy and that's something he needs to work on, I think the players around him respect him and, and uh, look to him for those leadership qualities. Coach Armstrong, I know it's kind of early evaluations, but uh, anything that you're noticing that he's doing different uh, so far? I think just some of the things that we had already talked about even when Courtney was here, which is, again, simplifying the verbiage of our offense, trying to streamline some of the run schemes. So in that case, should we just stay in it or stay with it? Make everything more of a package. And uh, I think it allows us to practice more in, a, in more of an appropriate teaching sequence. And um, Brian's a good football coach. And uh, I think uh, you can see it, it, it really, in my mind, things went very smoothly today. And uh, I thought things were good. And uh, I like where we're at. We've got 14 more opportunities to improve. What do you notice about some of the other new, new coaches, uh, how they're fitting? Yeah, you know, Mark is so much different in terms of his demeanor than Gerald, but he's a very intelligent, bright football coach. And um, I think he's, uh, he, it's, it's funny because they're getting the same amount of work done. There might not be as much uh, screaming and hollering over there, but it's, uh, it's just a different style. And I think the kids have responded really well to that. And then uh, Josh is a high energy, uh, high energy guy who's you know, played at a high level and I think has a lot to offer. And, uh, it's just I think we've just been really fortunate to be able to to bring some young coaches in here that uh, have the ability to be kind of stars in this profession down the road. And uh, I know I felt the same way about Gerald and I feel the same way about Marius and Josh. And, you know, What's the plan in terms of install? How much new stuff are you guys going to put in? What's the timeline like? We're front loaded like? a little bit. I mean, there's some new things that went in today. Um, some of the past concepts that, um, that that we're working on right now, really to simplify things, get the ball out of Chris's hands a little bit quicker, make the reads a little bit more streamlined. Um, and so it, it, it may be new, but I think because it's going to be it's going to be easier and more simple. I think that's actually going to benefit us, and I think it'll help us go a faster. I mean, the first three practices pretty heavy in terms of new install, and then kind of start to back off a little bit after that. How do you think he looked throwing the ball? We didn't get to see too much of it. Yeah, he looked uh, he looked better. I'll say that. And it starts with his feet, and I think that's the thing he understands. Is, you know, everything goes from the ground up, and, and uh, his ability to just focus on that has helped him a lot. Some guys out here not in pads. Can you address any of the injury situations you guys got going uh, on? You know, kind of just a lot of guys that are coming off off-season injuries. Most of the players, you know, Tucker Yates had, a, had his, his shoulder and his knee cleaned out at the end. And he'll be ready to go in the fall and just uh, doesn't, need to, doesn't need to bang on the old dog, and he'll be, he'll be good. Uh, uh, Kahari had a shoulder surgery in the off-season. He's doing well. Um, those are kind of the, and the guys that you're seeing by and large. You know, uh, Nigel Hale uh, ended up having to have that knee operated on, and so that's what he's dealing with right now. And, Going through that, I'm trying to think uh, other guys you probably noticed more than I do, but uh, basically it's nobody that's missing right now because anything that's happened in the off season is just things that uh, were coming out of out of uh, last fall, the uh, standard spring ball. Take care of your guys, type stuff. Some veteran offensive linemen. So does that give some young guys a chance to get some more reps? I, I think so. You know, the one guy that I would like to really see, and I think I might have talked about this yesterday, was uh, was Taylor Tuiasso. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it was unfortunate he had a little shoulder deal that happened late in the season, and uh, ended up having to have that operated on. But uh, but there's there's plenty of opportunities for those guys to get a ton of reps. What about the energy level, I and mean, how important is that on day one? Well, I think, you know, there's a certain energy level that you want to have all the time. But at the end of the day, this is a marathon. I don't want to come out here and, you know, act like we won the Super Bowl and practice one of spring ball and then get to practice five and forget that, you know, that, that we like playing football. So I think we're building towards something here. The we're building towards is uh, September 2nd. And, uh, this is just the first time. Yeah, I wish we had any opportunities to practice.